Hi, and welcome to episode one of Wooly Geek. Um, tried to record last night, and it was an epic fail. Uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. I got most of the episode recorded before I had some technical issues, and then technical issues hit. So we're going to try recording again. I've got a lot of stuff to talk about, but I hope to not keep too long. You might hear a game going on in the background because I don't live alone and we all love to game in this house. As a matter of fact, right now on the Xbox 360, we are playing uh, Magic the Gathering, Pl Planeswalker, Duel of the Planeswalker, I think it is a 2012 edition and you can download that if you have an Xbox Live account. Have you ever searched the arcade game queue? There's some good games on there. I have this weakness for 80s arcade games, and so we have downloaded now Pac-Man Championship Edition, Ms. Pac-Man, which is the arcade edition that is a real throwback to the 80s game, uh, Galaga, same situation, throwback to that 80s game, we really love it, and um, the Magic the Gathering uh, Duels of Planeswalker Edition 2012, which is really good. Um, I think... Oh, and we also downloaded Tetris Splash with my my five-year-old loves that game. She likes Galaga a lot too, but she's once we downloaded Tetris Splash yesterday, she's been really into that one because it's a puzzle game and she likes to build things. She's big into the Duplo blocks, the Lego blocks, things like that. And to her, it's like she likes to sit there and build a tower. So she's totally not getting any points, but she's building a tower and it makes her happy. Uh, she'll build a house and some steps with windows and things like that. Like she'll totally not close out any lines because she's trying to build it up. She doesn't quite get yet that that's really not the point of the game, but whatever. She's five. She's going to do her own thing. Uh, so, um, I am just about finished with school. I have one more week left. I just closed out two of my, uh, classes. I'm going to have a bachelor's degree in information security systems. I'd like to go into security audit. Uh, it's where a lot of my education was focused. So um, that's what we're finishing up with. My capstone project finishes up next week. My capstone project is a culmination of everything that I've learned for the past like, four years, basically. Uh, we are... Um, have a request for proposal from a theoretical like state government in the state of New York, for example. And we are responding to the request for proposal by you know, offering uh, the certain things that they're requesting us to do work for, such as um, uh, HIPAA related data backup systems, uh, upgrade of the server systems, risk assessment and uh, risk management plan, things like that. So, um, that has actually been a huge project and unlike my uh, associate's degree project where I worked on a team, this time I'm actually working alone, but I'm helping out a lot of the students that attend on my campus that are doing the same project. So I'm sort of working on a team with them, uh, but I am responsible for all the work for my projects and it's six to six to seven reports a week, except for this week coming, I've only got five reports to do. And then next week I have to develop a PowerPoint presentation to submit as well as uh, write up an executive summary. So I'm going to be really busy next week. So I, I actually may not record next week, although by Sunday it'll all be over. So I may record just as a, <laughs> yahoo, it's done. Um, so anyway, there's where we're going with that. Uh, one of the classes I just finished a report for this evening, I just finished a report, a seven to 10 page report on sustainable energy sources and uh, I learned a lot. Solar energy itself has like five different sources of collecting or ways of collecting solar energy and each way does something different. So that was a really interesting report too. But moving right along, you know what? I think I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump into uh, knitting works in progress. Uh, so we're going to get into the knitting portion of the show. So a little bit less geek and a little bit more wooly. Um, let's see, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Holly and I can be found on Ravelry and Plurk and I will link those, uh, profiles in the show notes. 
So you can find me there. I will link both my Ravelry and my Plurk account so you can find me if you like. Um, but uh, I've been knitting off and on for four years, mostly the past two years. Uh, yeah, kind of taught myself knitting. I had somebody to teach me crochet about 20 years ago and uh, I enjoyed it, wanted to get into knitting, tried it four years ago, found it difficult, got discouraged. You know, crochet, you've got one needle to worry about. Knitting, you've got these two things and I, I just couldn't get my hands coordinated. But finally, I found some YouTube videos and got back into knitting about two years ago. And uh, it's really, really become a huge hobby for me and a source of relaxation. So uh, I enjoy it. So getting into works in progress, um, I have the Crosswords at the Coffee Shop Cal, Crosswords at the Coffee Shop Cal by uh, Carrie Steinmetz, who uh, actually sadly recently passed away uh, just this past week. And this is a cow that uh, the Ravelry community is doing in her memory. It is a $5 pattern and I will link it in the show notes. The nice thing about this gorgeous cow is it has a huge lacy pattern section and then a stockinette stitch section. Um, and the it has a uh, shawl style. And then over here, and there's directions also for the shawlette version if you want something a little bit smaller. It calls for Aran weight yarn on size 8 needles. And, you know, I just can't. My size 8 needles were occupied on Christmas projects, Christmas knitting done a lot of Christmas knitting lately and I can't just do something the way it's supposed to be done it's just not me I can't I just can't I don't know there's some kind of something there that I'm, I'm just required by nature to do it my way even if it's not the best way so I went with a bulky weight yarn I went with um where's my yarn band okay can't find the yarn band at the moment but I went with Actually, one of my least favorite yarns to work with, I went with um, Lion Brand in the Golden Color Homespun Yarn. Uh, again, the, the colorway is called Golden. It's this beautiful yellow that I'm doing for the lace pattern. I see how bumpy it is, but if I can pull out a section and kind of show you what I mean, it's probably not going to do it now. But the yarn... Um, the way it's twisted, you've got like almost the loosish fibers pretty much just combed. It's not really twisted, twisted, but there's this like coarse string that runs up the fiber, which creates these little bumps, but these bumps slide up and down the fiber. And I don't know if you can see that right there. See how I can pull it out pretty straight or I can slide them together and make them really bumpy. There we go. Well, it does that while you're knitting and that just irritates the bejesus out of me it really does i hate working with this yarn but it is really soft and it looks beautiful when it's knitted up in a project and here is i just finished a row earlier i'm actually almost finished with the first lace pattern repeat so here's an example of what that looks like and it's really turning out nice um, so it's 24 rows in this lace pattern and then you do the 24 rows again and then you get into the stockinette pattern of it and it's working up quickly and it's beautiful um, I do suggest especially for the lace portion because you do 24 rows and you repeat those 24 rows do use a row counter it will save you a lot of headache um, it's optional but it really does save you a headache this is the yarn that I'm going to use for the stockinette portion of it. I went with a contrasting green, brown, reddish color again by Lambrand Homespun. And this one is in the Herb Garden colorway. So again, yarn that I hate, but the colors look gorgeous together. And uh, I hope to have this finished. It's not going to be finished by the next time I record, but it should be finished after that. So hopefully sometime around Christmas because my goal is to be able to wear this at Christmas time so hopefully it'll be done by then we'll see 
I just had a birthday, so yay, belated birthday for me. And birthday present to myself, I ordered some yarn. Um, I ordered some sock yarn. I'm big into making socks lately. And it just came in yesterday. It's from Apothecary Yarn. And it is in this really neat colorway of reds. It's like a light bright red to a darker red, green, and then this like caramely golden yellowy color. And the colorway is called Candy Apples. And it is again by Apothecary Yarns. Flip it around so you can read it. And they are on Etsy. And I will link the shop in the show notes. They have a ton of this is their traditional sock yarn. Classic sock is what they call it. But they have different types of finger yarns, sock yarns, um, different all kinds of different colorways. This one is very Christmassy. It is 440 yards of fingering weight classic sock, 100 grams. I can maybe get two pairs of sock out, out of this if the other pair is a small set for my daughter. That would be so cool. If we had matching socks, we could cool. Nice squishy fingering weight yarn, beautiful Christmas colors. I can't wait to work with this. So that's one of my favorite objects that came in this week. Um. I also just recently got this cute little project bag from the Loopy U. It's a linen bag. They're ten dollars, and uh, this adorable little sheep with the socks. He's embroidered on there, and then you've got the Loopy U logo. And in there is one of my other works in progress. Oops. And it is. Almost didn't put this project in there because the needles are sharp. But it is a sock that I have in progress. And on this one, I'm just using um, the Patton's Croy FX sock. And I do not have the ball band, so I can't tell you what color it is. But it's the one that's kind of like a rosy pink to a light pink to a brownish to a grayish brown. Is that and I do the sock toe up and I'm working on the afterthought heel so the first sock is almost done and I have not done the second sock yet so this is a you're kind of learning how to do an afterthought heel so this is still a work in progress and that is tucked in my loopy you bag this is perfect size bag for small projects like socks I love it I love it it's so cute and actually when I order the loopy you bag I got uh, samples, samples of yarn from Loopy U. This one is just their Loopy U Solid Series yarn, and then this was their Loopy U. Oops, drag that all over the place. I actually tucked it onto here, so I would have. But this is their Dream in Color Starry, which is this red kind of with a gold sparkle in it, and I put that on this little card that I was also given for free. This is a knitting needle inventory. I've never seen one of these before. I haven't actually used it yet. I'm going to take the time once school is over and sit down with all my needles and inventory them because I have to sit down with my needle gauge and uh, size, excuse me, size of double points and such. But it's a way to keep track of what size needles you have and how many, like what's the quantity of them. Do you have more than one set or whatever. So this is really, really handy when you're going to uh, do a project and you're not sure if you have the correct size needles bingo here you go you've got your whole needle inventory on one little card and it fits down into my little case that I keep my knitting notions in which this is how I stay organized it is a two dollar plastic pencil case that I got at back to school time if the top section has the bottom section actually has a pen and I can fold up a pattern in there. I got a pen for keeping track. I have beads for another shawl that I'm working on and I don't have it handy right now where I would show you. It is a work in progress. Um, this is my, my gauge measurer and my uh, needle sizer. And this is actually um, 
super floss for beading. And then, you know what? If I happen to get something in my teeth, I got super floss. But this is actually used for knitting, for stringing beads on knitting. And there is a tutorial by uh, Lala from the Knit Girls, and I can link that in the show notes as well. Um, and that's just really an easy way to add beading to a knit project without using crochet. So the other side I have, you know, different types of stitch markers, two different sizes of plastic rings. I have these pretty little beaded stitch markers I have. These sort of annoy me sometimes though. Most of the time I'm reaching for this cheap plastic ring. I have actually, I'm clumsy. I'll put my eye out with a knitting needle if I'm not careful. This is liquid skin. It's a good idea to keep something like this, especially if you hurt yourself easily like I do. Keep that in there. Flexible tape measure, stitch holders, darning needle, and um, various sizes of double points and a couple of crochet hooks for that dropped stitch that I will inevitably drop. I have a couple sizes of this in here. So that, and my scissors go in here too, although they're not in there at the moment. Um, this keeps me organized and it costs me like two bucks. Great, great resource. And this can just fit right in there. And the bead side. And there we go. And that way I don't lose anything because I have four cats one of them is a klepto and she will she likes to steal my knitting stuff so that's it that i've got going on right now for works in progress except for a sweater that i'm working on and a green chenille by loops and threads and i can't remember the colorway on that i don't have it handy with me right now because i don't have a lot of progress on that um so i'll probably show that next week i hope to work on that a little bit more this week that's something that I would like to have done sometime after New Year's. It's probably going to take me that long because I'm working on some other projects too. Um, finished objects. I don't have a lot to show for finished objects right now. I really don't. I've been working on a bunch of stuff. I actually do have one handy. I've made a series of these cowls for uh, some of the men in my husband's family. And they're really nice because it gives them a scarf without the long tails of a scarf getting in their way. Especially for a certain brother-in-law who wears a uniform or likes to go hunting. He doesn't have scarf tails that will get in his way when he's doing that. And these are really comfortable. They're warm. This particular one I did out of some inexpensive Red Heart yarn. It's the Red Heart Super Saver Worsted. And it's in the Aaron Fleck colorway. And I have enough of this left to do one to two more cows if I wanted to. Which I'm sick of doing them, so I'm not going to do any for a while. But I like these. I actually uh, have made myself a couple of cows too. But the nice thing about these is they're not drapey. They just fit right around the neck like a collar. And they're good to go. And I just like that sort of masculine, soft tweed effect that this yarn has. It's really nice having that little flex, little pops of brown and black. And on this light yarn, it looks really nice. And I hope that Paul and Sean like them. I'm not really worried about them catching this podcast. So I'm just going to go ahead and show it and say their name. <laughs> if my podcast gets more popular, I'm going to have to be careful with that because I might be giving away a gift too soon. Uh, spinning works in progress. I got this fiber from Crystal Creek Fibers on Etsy, and I will link the shop in the show notes. This is an art bat of four ounces of merino, alpaca, silk, and angelina, and it is gorgeous. The colorway is called Celtic Lux, and it's hard to see, but you've got like two different colors of greens, white black there's even a pale blue thrown in there like a tealish blue and it's you almost miss it but it's in there and it's a beautiful bat I've had a wonderful time spinning it I'm spinning it on my drop spindle I have just a plain wooden drop spindle that I ordered from Etsy and I can't remember the shop that I ordered it from 
but it's a beginner spindle. It's a nice weight. It's well balanced. Um, it came with three ounces of natural wool to play with, and I got it all for under 20 bucks. So that was really a good buy, and it got me into spinning, and I love spinning. And I can't wait to make something with that. Um, let's see. Show you the spindle. But I've got a couple of ounces already skeined up, and then I've got about, I don't know, maybe another ounce on the spindle, and there's at least two ounces left. So, ounce and a half to two ounces left. So, I may not have quite an ounce on here right now. But it's just really nice. It's got some locks to it. It was a bat. See, there's there's a lock there. And it's kind of thick and thin, and that's partially due to the bat and partially due to my inexperience with spinning. But I think it's coming out lovely. See, it got really thin right there. I've got some overspun parts, but if I choose to ply it, I'm going to lose about 30% of my twist, any my original twist anyway, so I'm kind of not worried about the overspun bits. I'm on the fence about whether or not to leave it as a single or ply it. I might actually leave it as a single for maximum yardage, but we'll see. I'm going to consider the whole hand spun yarn uh, once it's all spun up and decide whether or not to um, ply it. So what I've already done up in a hank has not had a bath and has not had the twist set yet because I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. So there's that. Um, don't have any book reviews this week, although I do want to start a book review. At least every couple of shows have some either a book or a knitting magazine to review or a game to review. Um, so we're just going to head right on to favorite things. This week I want to highlight some indie shops that are on Etsy. Um, either I have ordered things from them before and I've been exceedingly happy, or uh, I know the people that run the shops. Um, one of the shops that I want to feature is Russell Lodge Knits, and I will link all the Etsy links to each of the shops. Um, in the show notes. Russell Lodge Knits is by my friend Diane and she has some beautiful patterns and some beautiful knitted items that she's done. Uh, she's a very accomplished knitter. She makes everything from kilt hose. Uh, her husband also knits and he makes kilt garters. He's actually from Scotland so they do a lot of uh, like Scottish country knitting and things like that. Berets, uh, socks, kilt hose, um, hand spun yarn. Uh, so she has, she's not a huge shop, but she's on there. It's Russell Lodge Knits. Uh, you'll see a girl in some pictures modeling some hats and a guy modeling uh, some kilt hose and a hat. That is Diane and Arlen. So the shop owners are also the models that you see on the, sh on the uh, site. So that's pretty cool too. If you're curious about what they look like, just check out the site. Uh, one of the other shops I want to feature is a shop by a friend of mine whose name is Pixie Cleo Arania, and she has a shop called the Muses Alchemy. She has nail polish. I know it's not knitting related, but people, this show is about a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, she does nail polishes that, if you're curious, they are big free, big three free. That means that they don't contain any... I know I'm going to mispronounce this, toluene, DPB, and I'm not even sure what that is, but I know it's yucky, and formaldehyde. Now, I know nail polishes contain formaldehyde. Um, none of her polishes contain those products, and when possible, she goes big for free, which means they also don't contain flalates, and I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I think I'm pretty close. Um, what are you doing, dog? Sorry, my dog was beating her tail in my project bag. Uh, when she goes big for free, those cost a little bit more because the base for those polishes is a little, is a little bit more. Pixie actually used to be a tattoo artist, and uh, she's wonderful color, really, really, really beautiful artist. But she has uh. She is now unable to continue her tattoo work with carpal tunnel, and she also has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, 
so she doesn't work. She is disabled and doesn't work. So she makes money by creating nail polish and her polishes are fabulous. Holographic colors, black light reactive colors, just about anything that you can think of she can create. She recycles her polish bottles. Uh, as a matter of fact, the neighborhood children in her neighborhood will bring her their polish bottles for her to recycle in exchange for free manicures. And I think that's really cool that she also works in her community that way. Um, so that is the Muses Alchemy. And so if you're interested in some safe nail polish, check her out. Seriously, check her out. Um, Crystal Creek Fibers, I'm going to link in there because that's where I bought the Celtic Lux Bat that I'm currently spinning. And they are a wonderful shop. Lots and lots of product on that shop. Everything from drop spindles, spinning wheels, nitty knotties, drum carters, all kinds of fibers and spun yarns. And so they have a lot. There's hundreds of items on that shop. Uh, so if you're interested in especially holiday gifting and things like that, check out Crystal Creek Fibers on Etsy. And I think you'll find something that you'll like. So that is it for the show this week. Tune in next week and we will have more to cover. Um, hopefully I will have, seriously doubt I'm going to have the shawl finished, but I'm going to try. I'm going to really try. I will be finished with school. And so next week we will celebrate that. I graduate, by the way, January 4th. So really, really excited about that. Um, I will have more indie shops to feature and hopefully more finished objects to show you than just one. Because <clears throat> really, one finished object is kind of sad. But yo, I'm in school. It's the best I can do right now. Good night.